The view is, is quite stunning. It certainly makes a pleasant change from using a single eyepiece. So, so far, two thumbs up for one for each eye. So here is my new binder viewer, freshly arrived from Telescope Express in Germany. You adjust the interpupillary distance. And the beauty of this eyepiece is that you don't need any optical correctors or bar lows for the eyepieces, which obviously are now this far further away from the focuser. Comes in a nice pelly case, and you've got plenty of space for, the, for additional eyepieces. So let's go and set up and have a look. So I'm outside tonight, as you can see, we've pretty much got a full moon. It's actually drowned all the faint stars out. So have a look at the moon, have a look at Saturn, have a look at Jupiter. And I want to test my new bino viewers. Jupiter, go to. We'll just swing around to have a look at Jupiter. So we've got the most amazing sight of Jupiter. We've got the great red spot. And we've got one of the moons, I'm not too sure which yet because I haven't looked it up, but it's actually casting a shadow onto the onto Jupiter's surface. The most amazing sight. I started off with the 19mm panoptics and I've just swapped over to the 13 uh, 30mm anagmas. And it's just this beautiful sight with Jupiter with its cloud belts, the great red spot, the moon, the shadow transit. So really enjoying using the binary view, it's a very pleasant way of observing. There's a kind of annoying reflection there, there's obviously a lot of complicated glass, and you get this weird reflection, but that'll hold your eyes in just the right position, it's quite finickety. But when you get your eyes in just the right position, the view is, is brilliant, really enjoying this, really enjoying using the binary views. So I'll have a carry on looking at Jupiter, and then I'm going to swing across and have a look at the moon. So I'm actually having the most amazing view. So even though the moon looks full, there's always a bit of Terminator somewhere that you can see. And the view, looking through both eyes, is absolutely stupendous. Do you get this weird sort of reflections, false reflections? But once you focus your eyes past that, the view is really quite pleasant and you don't have any barlows or optical correctors to worry about. So while I wait for the sky to get properly dark, but we're still in this summer twilight so the stars aren't all out yet. I'm actually looking at Albareo at the moment, the beautiful double star, but even that star is bright enough to give some reflections. However, once I move Albareo out of the field of view and just randomly scanning through the Milky Way, it's a beautiful, beautiful field of view. This is a really nice way to observe, but if you bear that in mind, this is a deep sky observing bino viewer that doesn't need any optical corrections for the eyepieces to reach focus it is really nice I, th I think this is a keeper but it's not going to win any beauty competitions looking at Jupiter looking at Saturn looking at the double double the other thing to mention as well it has got a narrow field stop so my 90 millimeter panoptics for example I don't get the full field of view it's been yetted by the bino viewer itself it actually I don't mind because I'm using both eyes. So even though the field of view is slightly shorter, slightly narrower, it's actually not too bad. I've also had a look at the Dumbbell Nebula and it was hardly visible against the twilight sky with a rising moon. So I'm gonna wait a few weeks for the moon to disappear out of the sky. I'm gonna do a proper deep sky observing session. Let's summarize then. 
but looking at a bright star, looking at a bright planet, you do get this annoying sort of half moon reflection in the field of view. With a bit of practice, you can tune your eyes out. But the real benefit is using the binary viewer. You don't need any optical correction for the, for the eyepieces to reach focus. If your eyepiece can reach focus, then the binary viewer will reach focus. So yeah, looking good.